Hi everyone, I am Elisa Paganelli, author and illustrator of Un Albero Molto Speciale, a very special tree published by Edizioni Teoria in Italy. The story is about a child who apparently is a tree and who finds who he really is and what his real nature is thanks to his friends. It is a story about emotions, fears, friendship and awareness. In the book we can find a few animal characters and a working poem called Socratea ex Sorisa. At the end of the book I included an informative part about wildlife, environment and about Socrates ex Sorisa, thanks to Gerardo Avalos, professor of tropical ecology of Costa Rica. I've been able to write a bit more about this and his contribution has been really special to me and I'm really happy to have him here today. So thank you, Gerardo, for being here with me, uh, for joining me for this chat. I'd be very happy for you to introduce yourself and to tell us more about your job and what it is that you do. Elisa, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure um, to be here with you. I am a professor of tropical ecology at the University of Costa Rica and also I direct the uh, School for Field Studies in Costa Rica. So I'm a teacher. I teach for university students. I also do research on a variety of different topics, um, mostly uh, tropical palms and uh, tropical hummingbirds. That's what I do. That's wonderful and that's why I asked you to help me with my book to tell us a bit more about Socrates ex Sorisa. So I've got a few questions for you. Let's start with the first one. Why Socrates ex Sorisa is different from other palms? Yes, Socrates ex Sorisa uh, is very beautiful. It's a palm that um, sticks out when you enter the forest because the first thing you see are um, is the roots. The roots of Socratea are very long and also very tall. So they are separated and they are covered by spines. Your first impression is that it's not a very friendly pl uh, plant, but once you get more acquainted with it, uh, you kind of develop some sort of uh, love or fond for this uh, very beautiful palm. The leaves of Socratea seem that somebody used like a huge uh, pair of scissors and started cutting them because they are divided into kind of crazy segments. And then um, the, the trait, the characteristic that um, it's more like um, impressive about this palm are the roots, as I mentioned, because they form a huge cone that may reach up to two meters in height above the ground and then the roots are separated. So it's a really neat um, uh, tropical species and also it's a palm, so it's beautiful just by being a palm. Where this palm can be found? Yes, Socratea exorisa uh, lives in the rainforest. So it goes uh, from the northern Nicaragua all the way down um, to the edge of the Amazon rainforest in Bolivia, in Peru, and Brazil. And is one of the most abundant uh, palm species in the rainforest. A legend speaks about it as a walking palm. Is it just a legend or is there something real about it? Well, um, it's a legend. Uh, sadly enough, it's a legend because the palm doesn't move a lot. The fact that it has these um, very long extended roots that sometimes are called steel roots, um, people think that the palm is able to walk, um, but the palm is fixed in one place. So the cone of steel roots provides some um, plasticity, some flexibility for the palm to orient towards the light but it's fixed in one spot on the ground. So it doesn't move around, although, you know, it's kind of impressive and amazing uh, to believe, but it's just a legend. So the palm doesn't move. What makes a tree different or similar to human beings? 
Well, uh, one very important different, uh, difference between plants and humans is that plants uh, can make their own food. They can do photosynthesis, they can use the, the CO2, the carbon that we uh, have in the atmosphere, and they can fix it into living tissues in what we call biomass, in uh, the different tissues that make up the body of the plant. That's something that we can, cannot do. As animals, we have to eat plants uh, sometimes. Uh, it's true. We have to figure out how to find food uh, elsewhere. We cannot make our own food. The, pal the, the plants, and palms are no exception, are, are the same. They are doing photosynthesis. They are fixing carbon. And uh, they are very important because of that, because they help to regulate the climate. They also help to produce uh, rain and they also produce food for other animals in the rainforest. So they are very important in something that we call the food web of the rainforest. What can we learn from plants? It's something that we can learn not only from plants, but from all living things. Is their amazing capacity for adaptation. They adapt to different changes in the environment, like more rain, or uh, higher temperatures, or they go, can go up the mountain where the uh, conditions are cooler relative to the lowlands. So living things in general, and plants are no exception, have this amazing capacity to change and adapt to changes in the environment. And because they change, they produce more species. And that's why we have so many uh, different types of plants and animals in places such as the rainforest. What took you so close to plants and the studies about them? Well, um, I am a native Costa Rican and I grew up in the Central Valley of this amazing country, which is highly diverse. Uh, Costa Rica is close to the equator, so it has a rainforest. So I grew up in a coffee plantation that looked like a forest. So every day uh, for me was like an adventure, just uh, going out the door and stepping into my backyard. My backyard was a forest full of animals and plants. So I always uh, was attracted to uh, living things. And I decided uh, to study biology because uh, I feel it was natural for me. How your work today is helping the environment? I do academic work, which in many cases is uh, is not rocket science to begin with. It's nothing like uh, really complicated. But I work um, with the way that um, plants are constructed. So how they grow, how fast they grow, under what conditions. Um, Right now I'm working on the, um, looking at how palms modify their shape regarding the concentration of nutrients on the ground. But also I'm very attracted to hummingbirds. And I, was, I do actually pretty much what I do with plants. I look at the way they are constructed, how they, are in, they interact with each other because they are highly competitive. And I look at the way in which uh, different uh, morphological uh, variations among species uh, determine um, what species are better competitors than others. So uh, yes, I basically look at uh, how organisms are, organisms are constructed. But in, in this process, I also teach biology to the students. And I think that this is very important nowadays um, because of the climate crisis that we are facing, the environmental crisis that we are facing. And then I believe that uh, societies need to be more sustainable. And in order to do that, we need to find new ways to interact with nature, to respect nature. So I teach that to my students. Although I do research, I also do a lot of teaching, especially for young people, people in their early 20s, when they are making, you know, these decisions of what they want to do with their lives, I tell them that consider nature and perhaps, uh, you know, we can uh, make this society a more sustainable one. 
That's a wise advice, I think, for everyone. What is the situation today uh, of tropical forest? Yes, tropical forests around the world are facing many challenges, especially regarding uh, climate change and global warming, because uh, tropical forests are very wet and very warm environments. But right now, the temperature is increasing, and then they are losing water. There is a lot of more droughts. There is a lot of fires, things that uh, never happened in the recent past right now are happening faster. So we are losing a species. This is a, a major tragedy because the environments that are the most diverse uh, on the planet are being uh, affected by the climate crisis. And uh, we have a lot of species going extinct. And uh, that's why we need to increase awareness in the world uh, so that we reduce what is called our impact on the environment. We, we need to find ways to consume less expensive uh, commodities. Um, you know, switch um, from eating a lot of meat to less meat or no meat whatsoever. Because um, these kind of personal choices have uh, global impacts. And uh, it's not the rainforest, it will coral reefs, or it's uh, temporary forests that are affected. All of these are uh, removing carbon from the atmosphere and making this, uh, this world a really uh, cozy place for humans. Nature is going to adapt, but perhaps the human species is not. So we need to implement these changes now. And the rainforest is kind of the tip of the iceberg of how we are you know, impacting our environment like if there was no tomorrow. I think the planet sent us a pretty clear message in the last years and perhaps we haven't listened very well, but we can still do it and we can change our lifestyles even if you're not working closely with nature like you and your students are doing. We can change the wor world altogether and awareness is the word that I highlight here because uh, I invited you right to spread that message that we can do something and I hope that this might be uh, interesting for someone who is listening to us and I'd like to ask you if you have future projects and how you are dealing now with the pandemic situation with the school, with the students, if you have anything going on there uh, for the future. Yes, uh, I'm taking this time to write papers, to analyze data uh, that I collected in the past, but my work is in the field. My office is in the forest. So because of the pandemic, um, we had uh, a little bit of trouble reaching the field. It's more difficult to do field research. I hope that this will change in the near future. And. Um, Yes, uh, the idea is to keep on doing this networking with other scientists, uh, sharing ideas. The pandemic has been a major obstacle in some cases, but also an opportunity. And we need, as you said, to, to use this uh, wisely as a reset for a lot of things that the humanity is doing wrong. This is a, a, an amazing opportunity, although it has been painful, it, uh, you know, it costs a lot of damage, but at the same time, it's uh, an opportunity that we need to use and uh, especially uh, to make uh, uh, the current societies more sustainable. I totally agree. Um, I would like to thank you so much for being here with me today to talk about your work and to answer my questions. I hope to see you again. Perhaps I will travel to Costa Rica and I'll be able to see the Socrates Soriza for real. Who knows? One day. Um, thank you so much again, Gerardo, for being with me today. Thank you, Elisa, for the invitation. It has been a pleasure. You are more than welcome to visit Costa Rica and I'll take you to the rainforest. It would be lovely. Thank you.